Welcome to episode 2 of Merchant Slip. In the last episode, we introduced the seven dwarves of the Gilded Silver and learned of their task to trade with the elves of the Adorations of Phantoms. We saw how their voyage turned to disaster when they encountered terrible weather and their wagons ended up in a tree on the side of the volcano called the Inferior Ash. The dwarves chose to make their camp at the foot of the volcano and carved out the beginning of their temporary fortress. They've made farms, stockpiles, a workshop area, a dining room, and a dormitory. We join our dwarves again in the summer. Even though Mafal, the leader of our group, has every intention of returning back to his mountain home at the Denebal, some of the others, particularly Logan the Mason, have been talking about staying here and making Merchant Slip their permanent home. The Denebal is a great fortress, but well, Logan never really felt at home there. Besides, lately there have been reports of vampire activity there, which is making many of the dwarves understandably uneasy. For now, Mafal is still treating this as a temporary campsite though, so we'll see how that develops. Regardless, Mafal has some plans for improvement. They will probably have to be here till at least the autumn, since that is when a new trade caravan is planned, so we'll need at least a couple of things. First, we'll carve out a stone depot in the sand layer under the surface. This will just be a big room where we can haul all the stones that are laying around scattered in the fortress. Mafal has stubbed his toes on damn rocks too many times already, so they need to go. Then we'll craft some mugs. Dwarves are drinking their alcohol straight from the barrels, and even though that's pretty effective, mugs and goblets would be a welcome addition for any dwarf. Then third, we'll put some chairs and tables in the dining room, so that we can eat sitting down. Also, making a nice dining room could be a great place to receive the caravan in the autumn. So, first things first, let's designate our stone stockpile. The stockpile will just consist of two very big rooms where the dwarves can dump any stone material they find which has been left behind by the miners. You've probably seen the stones lying around in for example the dining room. And once we have this stockpile done, the dwarves can start cleaning the place up a bit. Next, we'll need to address the problem of a lack of drinking goblets. Right now, Stukas, our farmer, is planting plump helmets. When those plump helmets are ripe, she'll harvest them, and then she'll turn those plump helmets into barrels of dwarven wine in the still. Those barrels are then brought to our stockpile, and as soon as the dwarf gets thirsty, he'll go to the stockpile, bury his head in the barrel, and inhales. And well, although that's an effective way of getting your alcohol, Many dwarves would prefer to drink out of a goblet, or a mug. And to make mugs, we'll first have to build a Quarf Dwarf's workshop. Once that's built, we can queue up a bunch of mugs to be made, and Enot, the dwarf, will then craft these mugs. The dwarves will then haul the mugs to the stockpile, and finally, the next time a dwarf goes for a drink, he'll first pick up a mug, and then use that to drink. As you can see, the dwarves have just finished the craft dwarves workshop. Now I'll just have to fill in the order to make mugs, and for the material I think I'll choose rhyolite, because we've got a lot of that lying around, and the dwarves will start working on the mugs. The next subject on the to-do list is the dining room. First we'll designate the room to be smooth. Since the room has just been mined out, its walls aren't very smooth. By giving our dwarves the order to smooth its walls and floors, we will increase the beauty of the room. And, well, who doesn't prefer to eat in a nice looking dining room? Once that's done, we need to get some chairs and some tables into the room. Let's take a look at what Logan the Mason has made so far. It looks like we got a couple of rhyolite and a couple of cinnabar thrones and tables. Hm. Well, the cinnabar ones look pretty nice in red, so if we alternate between the cinnabar and the rhyolite furniture, I'm sure that'll look nice. Let's give that a go. Looks like we've also made one cinnabar door. Let's use that as our dining room door. So, first we'll need to put the door in the doorway. So we'll pick the cinnabar door and put it here in the doorway like this. Then we'll need to place the tables and the chairs. We'll put them in the middle of the room. Here we go. We'll place the table here. We'll pick first a uh, rhyolite. No, let's, let's do the cinnabar table. Then after that, We'll place the next table, and that'll have to be a rhyolite table. 
and then a cinnabar table next to that one so that we got the alternate coloring going next we'll place the chairs so first we'll do the rhyolite throne then we'll pick the cinnabar throne next to that and a rhyolite throne next to that again Now, I think that's all we have planned for now. Let's put our dwarfs to work. Let's see how the mining of the stone stockpile is going. Since our miners have a little bit of experience now, the mining is going at a pretty steady pace. For now we have three dwarfs on mining duty and they are making short work of this peat layer. Oh, I see they are beginning work on the second room before the first one is complete. I'll just tell them that the first room has a higher priority, so that we can put the stockpile in there once it's complete. Then the rest of the dwarfs can start hauling the stone and cleaning the place up a bit before the miners are done digging out the second room. Next we'll just put in the stone stockpile. And in the stockpile we can see a list of items that are accepted. Basically any type of stone will be brought here from now on. On the workshop level we see that our dwarfs have hauled in some furniture into the dining room. The dwarves have also started working on smoothing, Moral is busy making some mugs in the craft dwarf workshop and we can see that Enot is starting to haul some stones to the stone stockpile. He's carrying the stones by hand, so it'll take him a while to haul the heavy stones up there. We'll fix that in a moment. As you can see the dwarves have put all the furniture we've designated into the dining room so it's time to designate the room as an actual dining room. After that the dwarves can start using it. We'll also designate the room to be our meeting hall. This means that any guests to the fortress will go there, as well as all the idle dwarfs and animals. We can see the dining room is being used immediately. Doset is going to eat some plump helmets, and Logan is going to join her with a chicken leg. Now it might be interesting to keep in mind that all our animals are guarded in the dining room as well, since it's designated as our meeting hall. And while Logan is devouring the chicken leg, one of the chickens hops onto the table and is looking on in horror how Logan is making short work of the chicken leg. That has to be a traumatic experience. I wonder if it's considering making a run for the elven settlements nearby. We'll have to make a separate chicken coop soon. Shortly after, Stukos brings in a guest. A human bard is traveling by. He requested a short meeting with Mafal. Hello, my name is Aristoki. And I am a bard by trade. I am travelling from the elves up north to the dwarven fortress of Edenable. And I saw your little entrance and my curiosity got the better of me. Nice little fortress you have going on here. Well, gee, thanks, Mafal replies. But well, it's just a temporary place. We'd like to get back to Edenable ourselves soon. But for now we don't really have enough food. Hey, I know. Could you do us a favor and send word of our situation here? so that they bring some extra food on the next caravan and we can join them to go back home? Sure, says the bard. I'll sing a song to praise this mighty fortress when I get back to Imtenable. What's this place called? Mafal is quick to correct the human. No, 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 this is just a temporary place. If you could just ask for help for us, that would be great. This place is called Merchant Slipped, but again, it's just temporary. Yeah, 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 of course, I'll make sure your dwarven brethren know of the situation. And before my folk could even reiterate the importance that the dwarves here are looking for a lift home, the bard prances away. Uh oh, well, we'll see what comes from this. Earlier, I said we'd get back to the problem of our dwarves hand carrying our stones to the stockpile. As we can see, the miners have completed the second stockpile area and we'll designate that as a stockpile area as well. As for doing so, we can set the number of wheelbarrows to be used for the stockpile. We'll put that up to a pretty high number. Wheelbarrows can be made from wood, and we have plenty of that lying around, so we'll just make a bunch of wheelbarrows. Then, the dwarves can pick up a wheelbarrow at the stockpile to haul the stones, which will be a lot quicker. Now Logan has been quite busy in the craft dwarfs workshop making mugs for quite a while now so let's check the stock screen to see how many mugs we have. So we're looking for mugs, let's see, barrels, no, uh, drinks, no, ah there they are, goblets, goblets, that's what we're looking for, goblets and mugs are the same thing and the dwarfs estimate we have about 40 goblets in the fortress. 
They're not quite sure because we don't have a record keeper yet and a record keeper would actually count all the stocks in here so we get an exact number. But they estimate about 40 which is more than enough for us. So let's cancel the repeating job in the Craft Dwarfs workshop to make mugs. Otherwise Logan would just keep making mugs and mugs until we run out of stone basically and that's not what we want. So let's just have a look at our dwarf working. I just love watching them going about their day. Here you can see my fall carrying a big boulder by hand. Wheelbarrows are being made as we speak, so this should be one of the last time that he is carrying the stones by hand. Let's speed up the playback a bit. Here we can see my fall picking up a wheelbarrow from the carpenter's workshop. And sure enough, a little bit later we see my fall coming in with a wheelbarrow to haul a rock. This will be a lot quicker. Oh, and what's this? Migrants? Some migrants have arrived! Oh no. When the news of the migrants reaches my fall, he spits out the dwarven wine he was just drinking. What in Zephon's name are the migrants doing here? This is just a temporary campsite. Oh, yeah, that, would you look at that? There they come. Coming in straight for our new and improved dining room. Mafal hurries there as well. What the hell are you guys doing here? Oh, hi Mafal. We heard from a human bard visiting us that you have quite a nice little fortress going on here. And we'd like to join. Make a new start for ourselves, you know. Back in Edenable, there have been more and more reports of vampire activity and we figured we're up for a new challenge. So we've decided to head over here and join up. The Bart said there were only a few of you, so we figured we'd be welcome here. My fall is speechless. But uh, g What? H how? Oh, God, we told the Bart that we need help. We want to get back to the mountain homes. <clears throat> Safir stepped forward. Listen here. We're staying. If you want to go, then fine. We'll elect our new leader and we'll make something of this place. Don't you realize there's a damn volcano right next door? Think of the possibilities, man. We can tap into this thing and get all the magma we need. We can use it to start our metal industry. There are trees outside we can use. There are plants around everywhere that we can brew into different kinds of alcohol. This place is a paradise compared to the cold and icy Edenable. If you can see that, you're not fit to be a leader anyway. Slightly taken aback by this aggressive, but he has to admit, attractive lady dwarf, speaking her mind so frankly, a fall things for a second. Uh, okay, okay, I've heard Logan saying the same things lately as well, so... For now I'll just put you guys to work and we'll figure something out. You're right that this place has potential. And one way or another we're in this together now anyway. After the heated encounter, my fall returns to the dormitory. Well, I guess we'll be staying. I mean, it can't hurt to see what we can turn this place into. And I'll just make sure we have enough food and drink stockpiled so that we can return home if needed. Alright, let's do this. I guess if we're going to be staying here for a long time, we'll need some permanent sleeping arrangements. So we've designated some bedrooms to be dug out. 15 bedrooms leaves a little room for extra growth, so this should do for now. And after that, We'll also be needing a trade depot. The next dwarven caravan will probably travel past here, so we should see if we can trade some stuff with them. We'll need some more beds and some more doors again, and our miners can go to work on the bedrooms. Then we'll extend the dining room a bit with some more furniture. Free seats and free tables isn't quite enough for the 11 dwarves we have now. Also, after a season, we have some plump helmets in our stockpiles. Let's put that to use and brew some drinks and cook some meals. One of the four migrants, who was speaking her mind so frankly when meeting my fall earlier, was Sazir, who is an amateur brewer. She'll take care of the brewing from now on. Rikov, another migrant, has been assigned to cooking. He doesn't have any skill for it, but he'll learn on the job. We'll leave them to it for now. Looking at the bedrooms, we can just see my fall mining out the last few sections. You can see a small army of dwarves following him around with wheelbarrows to haul all the stone to the stockpile. 
Ah, and autumn has come. That means we've been here for half a year now. Time flies and luckily our dwarves are quite industrious. Since all the rooms are dug out, we can now put beds and doors in all the rooms. Once the dwarves have hauled all the furniture to the correct spots, we just have to designate every room as a bedroom. And the dwarves will all pick out their own little bedroom. All the dwarves have to do now is smooth the floors and the walls and we'll have some nice sleeping quarters for our dwarves. While the dwarves are busy smoothing the bedrooms, a message reaches my fall. A dwarven caravan has arrived. The dwarves knew this day would come, so the dwarves are pretty curious to see what news there is from the dwarves of Edenabal. Since Mafal has chosen to build a trade depot, the caravan has a nice place to unload, and the merchants are moving there now. The liaison quickly finds Mafal. He introduces himself. Tobel Geschukst is the name, but you can just call me Tobel. Now, dwarven names are often difficult to pronounce for the average human, but well, Mafal even has no idea how to repeat Tobel's last name, so he's glad he's content dealing with him uh, on a first name basis. Ah, nice to meet you Tobel, my name is Mafal. I am your liaison from the mountain homes. Let's discuss your situation. First, Mafal explained how they wound up here, and how this fortress came about. Hmm, a tornado you say? <laughs> That's just extraordinary. Well, we wanted to branch out from the frozen mountain homes anyway, so it's a blessing in disguise. You've got quite a nice place going on here. Mafal is relieved to hear that. He was a little bit worried that his failure to finish his initial task of trading with the elves would not sit well with the dwarves back in the mountain homes. Well, Mafal says, we've been lucky to survive really. I wanted to return home with you guys initially, but well, once migrants started showing up, we decided to make this place a bit more permanent. Yes, a human bard told us you were settled here, and some of our citizens, worried about the recent uh, vampiric activity, wanted to check this place out. Since uh, Edenable is at capacity anyway, we sent some people this way. Seems like uh, our fortunes will rise and fall together. They continued swapping stories about the going-ons of Edenable and Merchant Slip. They drafted some import and export agreements and discussed prices. Afterwards, Tobel asked who the fortress's broker was in order to make a deal with the merchants above. Mafal thought for a second. Well, well, we've not yet appointed someone, but I have someone in mind. I'll send her up in a moment. Tobel agreed and they parted ways. And Mafal knew just who to ask and set straight out to find Sazir the female migrant who spoke so frankly about wanting to stay here. When they were talking, he noticed she had a way with words and would be perfect for the job. Since Sazir is currently the fortress's brewer, Mafal found her working in the still. Sazir, can I talk to you for a second? Sazir wiped some sweat off her brow and took off her apron. Sure, what's on your mind? Well, the fortress kind of needs you, Sazir. How do you feel about being the fortress's broker? I have a feeling you'd be uh, quite a negotiator. Sazir raised an eyebrow. A broker? Uh, that's quite a thankless job, isn't it? I'd rather keep brewing. I've made some great dwarven wine so far. And as a broker I wouldn't really have anything to do or say, right? I would just handle some merchants. Hmm, my fault fought for a second. How about we also make you the fortress's manager? Now that sounds more like it, Sazir thought. I'd be kind of an assistant expedition leader, right? Well... More of an assistant to the expedition leader, Mafal said. Sazir looked back at the still for a second and looked Mafal straight in the eyes. Alright, you have a deal. I'll do the trading and I'll manage the workshops and the work orders from now on. If you make sure I'll get a nice bedroom and office to work in. Sazir reached her hand out for a handshake to seal the deal. <laughs> Mafal chuckled, thinking... She's already showing some of those uh, negotiating skills. They shook hands and Mafal told Sazir about the merchants uh, in the trade depot. Sazir quickly ordered a barrel of dwarven wine to be hauled up to the trade depot for trading and made her way up there. For now we'll just trade for a few pieces of leather and cloth, since we have none of that at the moment here in Merchant Slip. Sazir finishes the trade and the dwarves haul the leather and the cloth back to the stockpile. Next year we'll make sure to have some more stuff to trade. Next, Mafal has some work to do, because since he made Sazir assistant to the expedition leader, 
By making her a manager and a broker, we need to order our drawers to dig out an office and a bedroom for Zazir. And, well, since we could really use a bookkeeper and Mafal's making his rounds through the fortress quite regularly anyway, he decided to grant that title to himself. And to take a proper inventory of all the stuff in the fortress, he'll need to work in an office as well. So we'll make sure to dig out two sets of bedrooms and offices. Once the rooms are dug out, we'll put in the furniture. A bed for the bedroom and a chair and a table for the office. That way they can do their work near their bedroom. Lastly, we'll make sure everything gets moved. And while the dwarves are working on the rooms, some more migrants arrive. This time, three dwarves from Adenable join us at Merchant Slip. Let's take a look at the situation that we find ourselves in now. It is mid-autumn of the year 100. We've been here for, well, about half a year now. We have 14 dwarves living in the fortress, and by now we have plenty of food and drinks. We're not quite sure how much we have, because Mafal has not counted the stocks yet, but we can see that we have about 200 drinks and 60 or so meals, which is plenty for now. If we look at our unit list, we can see our 14 dwarves here. There's also currently a human swordsman visiting. Though the dwarves have not accepted his petition to live here in the fortress, he is staying around regardless. We're not quite sure what's up with that, but he's not harming anyone, so we'll let him be for now. Of the new arrivals, two dwarves have actually useful skills, so we made them a weaponsmith and a stonecrafter. The third is just a peasant for now, so he can help with the hauling. We have a bunch of animals in the fortress. The immigrants sometimes bring along their pets, and we have had our starting animals as well. We have a few chickens, some dogs who've already had puppies, and a couple of cats. Furthermore, we have two yaks, and some other grazing animals. All in all, I think our fortress is well stocked for the coming winter, and I think this is a great place to end this episode. In this episode, we've done quite a lot. We made our dining room, we set up muck production, we got a stone stockpile and cleaned up the fortress quite a bit, we got our first migrants and decided to make this our permanent fortress. Uh, among our migrants was Sazir, a dwarf we quickly made broker and manager. After the migrants we got bedrooms up and we received our first trade caravan. In the end we started working on some offices for Sazir and Mafal. All in all a pretty productive episode. Next episode we'll set up our military, we'll make a tavern and a temple. And after that we'll start working on some bigger projects. I'm going to try to get an episode out every week on the weekends, but my wife and I spend quite a few evenings on this, so I might miss a deadline here or there. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching the episode, and if you want to help me out, you can leave a comment or give the video a like. I also want to thank Tarn and Zach Adams for making this great game, uh, Simon Swerver for, uh, for the background music I use, and Crux Smash for the inspiration to make these videos. He makes amazing videos and I can't recommend watching his channel enough, so make sure to check it out. I hope to see you all the next episode. Bye bye.